Yo, welcome Throny. So it's been over a month now that Throne and Liberty Global released. And since the start, I've providing the Expo Dagger Guide. And I want to start out that update video with a big, big thank you for all the people that five-starred the guide and made it the highest rated guide on questlog.gg for the new class Scorpion. And while I did update the questlog version every two to three days along the launch, now I think it's time to do a new video. Important to notice that the gear changes are minimal and we are mostly focusing on new skills and new combinations that I found viable, especially re in regards of the current plate meta. So we're going to dive into the skills first and then we do everything else like rotations, um, gear, guardians, morphs, like everything. So for that, let's go in game and we are going to go over all the free skill setups that I have because I have one for small scale PVP. I have one for PVE that I'm using and I'm having one one from large scale pvp and especially in the large scale pvp there were a lot of changes based on the knowledge that i gained in the last weeks so let's start for the small scale our 1v1 burst damage is coming from the quick fire nimble leap combination that means we are increasing the damage of quick fire by adding an additional attack we are decreased cooldown by 10 percent for every critical hit that we are doing and then we are allowing nimble leap to reset quick fire cooldown and we're giving two stacks on nimble leap so we can extremely quickly fire off three quick fires in a row. The next skill that's going to be used in our kit is the mark with the detonation marks special because this one will give us the ability that all the damage that we're dealing within six seconds we get dealt to the enemy again and one side effect is this is also reducing the incoming healing of the enemy by 60% so really valuable especially to counter all the heavy CC that we're getting for like when we're getting a sleep or when we're getting stunned by a great sword dagger player it's a must to have the remove CC from the selfless diffusion, which also means that we are almost never in PvP using that one actively to buff our damage. We are almost exclusively using it to break free of CC and then afterwards we are trying to burst in a return sweep onto our enemy. A large amount of our damage is coming from the Mother's Nature's protest with the lightning arrow skill. This is giving us a up to 15% chance to deal an additional 120% base damage and the amount of single attacks that we can go especially with like a combination like quick fire nimble leap is so insane that we are getting a large damage out of there and that's not only 1v1 damage this will also greatly boost our annihilation barrage shot sorry to interrupt but short self-promotion is needed currently 91.2 percent of the people watching the videos are not subscribed to the channel so let's make a deal if you learn something new in this video you have to subscribe where we are having the chance to hit 24 times so that means that we have like two of those um, hits with the 120 extra damage almost guaranteed the next thing that you want to have in small scale is actually the ability to deal lots of burst damage especially when you're like in arena and you're playing 3v3 no as soon as you manage to burst down one and you have the numbers advantage and you're going into the three versus two it will be so much easier for you to play for that we are running the thunderclouds version and the poison here we are turning into thunderclouds which will allow us to decrease the enemy's endurance and increase our chance to critical hit a lot and if you guys remember our weapons have a really um, low base damage we are starting at 34 all the way to 127 so if the enemies with high endurance manage to ma never make us crit we are in big trouble and that's why it's so important for us to run the thunderclouds we have an easier time stacking that we are also running the effect accumulation for cleaving moonlight that means even if our lightning infusion is off we can get stacks on the enemy fairly easy to follow up with the cleaving moonlight because with the first one we can use it twice so that means we can get like 12 stacks instantly there or if lightning infusion is up we can go up to 20 stacks in one rotation and why is it important to have those 20 stacks that's for our thunderclouds bombing here the more stacks of thunderclouds we're having the more damage you are getting on there so that one here is a must if you want to deal the highest burst damage and to catch our targets better off guard and to have an easier engage i would recommend getting 40 percent increase range onto our shadow strike and for the defensive setup and all of this we are running the camouflage cloak for the people that um sh listened really carefully we now saw that one skill is actually missing and that is mana exchange because that skill i would say is a bit of a preference and a bit of your gear state the worse your gear state 
is you will have uh, mana issues with export dagger at the start and then that skill will be mandatory once you are maxed out with best and slot gear you will not have that many mana issues anymore and you could then exchange mana exchange here for the phantom smoke screen which will basically make you immune to projectiles for three seconds and it's like really strong and it's also really good to cast to then spin to win in it while being like um, in an extra defensive state the passives are almost not changing so i will only go over them once for all the free builds one key thing to make sure that our mana region is working is assassin step and the second reason why we're using this is we are having the ability to gain additional movement speed and movement speed is king in pvp being able to be on the correct position being able to out move people being able to either gap close or create a gap it's really valuable then we've already saw that critical hit is extremely important because we're having that that high difference in base damage for the expo and for the dagger weapon so assassin's instinct is a must and also one of the things that you want to get to five early the number one that you want to get to five early because it's extremely strong and this is also going to be the reason why i am rather going to run a range and magic evasion build over a melee evasion build is that passive right here shadow walker that is giving us 690 additional range and magic evasion for six seconds after we're using a mobility skill and we are having a total of three mobility skills on our bar because we can use nimble leap twice and shadow strike so if you're playing properly you can keep that evasion up for a, a really good um, part of your fights then we've already said we are based on critical hits so critical damage is one of the best multipliers that we can get and that does not count only for passives also for set effects we've and nature's power is also a logical choice because we have just seen how many mobility skills we have and that means it's easy for us to benefit on the, the skill damage that we're getting here on our burst attacks because our burst attacks are started by mobility and we are getting here one of the most valuable stats for crossbow dagger and that is the bonus damage destructive fang has been changed since my last video guide but it is still good it used to give us additional critical chance but now it's reducing the defense of the enemy allowing us to deal higher damage overall and one condition is that we are having thundercloud supplied but with our multiple source of like cleaving moonlight and lightning infusion we can have that running non-stop that last is another change of the um, passives where we used to have a cooldown reduction was now changed to critical damage and this is now another way on how we can stack damage onto our enemy and benefit from all the multiple hits and our offhand weapon attack chance because once we get 10 stacks of bloodlust on the enemy we have 11.3 percent higher critical damage on the level 3 state all the way up to 12.3 percent alongside with skill damage boost also fairly easy to keep that stack up on our enemies then one thing not too many people are running but i'm a big fan of it because i already explained how important i think movement speed is and detection gives us a chance whenever we are getting hit to increase our movement speed and again this time not only magic and range evasion here also melee evasion which we're usually not building but it's a nice side effect so just those two passives can give us 1100 evasion extra that's more evasion extra than some builds are actually able to pull off with their gear so now let, let me show you like the the standard rotation um, that you want to be playing if you are engaging on someone you always want to make sure that your mother's nature protest is turned on here one side note is that if you are dying it sometimes looks like it's turned on but it's actually not turned on so that yellow color is sometimes bugging so make sure that after you are dead you um, reactivate that properly and i will try to do the um, rotation slowly so it's easier to follow so the first thing that you want to do is you want to buff up so you're going into the the um, lightning infusion then you will set the detonation mark so now all the damage that we are adding on top of it is actually being added up to the mark and then the mark at some point after six seconds will explode and deal the damage again to a 40 percent chance this is basically what we're having in our range kit so let's do it one more time a bit quicker we are buffing up detonation mark shoot 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 and we are with nimble leap resetting the um, quick fire then 
it depends how the fight is going. When we are having the chance to actually burst down the target and go for a kill, then after this combination right here, we will go engage with Shadow Strike. We will go double cleaving Moonlight to stack our Thunder Clouds bombing and then we bomb. And then usually your quick fire and Nimble Leap is also back up of cooldown. And you can go that, com that combination again and get the gap again between your enemy. The Annihilation Barrage, this is what we are using situational. So whenever we can deal damage to multiple people, we will obviously use this one. You can see right here that this is depleting our mana a lot. So usually you want to make sure to use mana exchange before that and right after. And once you're using your mana exchange right after, you instantly want to go and activate Mother's Nature Protest again as well, because that will at some point be turned off anyways, because you're going too low of a mana state. Then we're having the Camouflage Cloak. This is just either our oh shit button. When we're under heavy attack, we will use it to go into stealth and retreat, or we are into stealth and we want to attack out of the stealth um, onto our enemies. For the Guardian, I am using the Green Ranger Elowen. That one has a chance to bind all the enemies around you and it is increasing our chance to actually deal critical hits. Again, really important. And I want to do like one clean combo now so you get an idea on um, on how the class is played. So we're just gonna assume that that is, a, um, is an enemy right there. So we want to go into stealth, right? Um, when you have the resources, you also wanna use an attack remedy. And then we are going, we are starting to attack on range. Then we are engaging and finishing with our spin. And that should usually be enough to burst down targets in PvP especially because the detonation after that burst is still procking. The only thing you have to be careful is the uh, um, decision making on when you're using selfless diffusion because here in that situation I used it offensively to get my cooldowns down to get more damage but often it's important that you keep it up running until you have the CC removed. Another option to remove the CC is actually the precious purification stone which I would highly recommend crafting so you at least have the chance sometimes to get an order of an additional CC. Now let's talk a bit about the um, food that we're having here. I'm constantly running the mana region potions from the guild merchant. The only thing you have to be careful when you're dying those are actually being removed so only use them when you know that you're going to survive for a longer period of time or when you're starting to run out of mana for the damage food in pvp you're going to be using mostly the quality roasted honey apple it's fairly easy to get for the utility food you can either go with the vegetable stir fry 300 health 20 region that one can also be sneaked into arena if you activate it before you pour it in. Or you can go with the scorpion tail fritters. This is the only way to get damage out for more movement speed and more attack speed. Regarding morphs, I can recommend to choose the smallest ones that you can. This is also the reason why I'm running that, that bunny right here. Because the hitbox of the uh, morphs is actually different and that matters sometimes in PvP. Also, you should try to level up especially the flying morph and the dash morph um, to level 5 if you can. Because the effects that you're getting with like that accelerate and stuff will give you a big advantage actually in pvp when it comes to um, creating gaps or closing gaps now for the pve version of the skills we are not having too much of a change the only thing that we don't really need here is the stealth because there's not a lot of reasons to stealth but if we're using weak point shot we can use the silence of our shadow strike to actually get additional critical damage and weak point shot in itself even if you would fail the combo it still has a 500% base damage plus 135 so it does a lot of damage just in itself. The skill specializations here are also not that different. I don't think you will need the range on the shadow strike but instead you can go on to cooldown reduction for thunder clouds bombing allowing you to deal more DPS and then there is something that's a bit about preference here at the weak point shot I'm using the cooldown mostly. I'm not too eager to combo it with the bind for example. You could also go with the bind version and similar here with the cleaving moonlight i am not too much of a fan of the play style of activating it once having the 15 percent attack speed up running for all the other skills to deal more burst and then activating it again this is the best in slot version i'm just not a fan of the play style but if you want to for example push for like a rank one on gate of infinity you definitely want to spec that one if you just want to pvp in your pvp gear like the way i do it then i'm personally more of a fan of keeping the builds fairly similar so you don't have to muscle memory basically two totally different playstyles. The rotation here is also the same but depending on what specialization you're stacking you're either using your weak point shot normally or you make sure that you are applying the bind first 
first, and then you're using the weak point shot afterwards to get the additional bonus. Otherwise, you're using it against fury attacks when the bosses are casting them. Now let's go to build number three, my large scale PvP build, and this is probably the build that changed the most. At first, I was thinking that it's good if I have single target burst, so when people are diving into the backline, I can burst them down. It turned out that you have so much AoE damage and damage potential in the backlines that that protective role is almost not needed because the people can help themselves. So I changed my build accordingly to do two things. First, dealing as much AoE damage from range as possible so you can play into your backline in your healers, even with a crossbow range. And secondly, being able to spin to win in the enemy backline, fairly safe. And the other version is, I said, I don't want to kill the people that are coming in our backline, but I do want to provide the CC that other people can kill them quickly. And this is why the combination of Shadow Strike into the Prone of Ankle Strike is so important. For the AoE from the backline, we are using Lightning Throw, which also has the ability to reduce enemies' endurance. We are also having the Multi-Shot with the Rapid Shot specialization, which reduces the cooldown greatly and allows us to just um, free cast it into the enemy's lines. Additionally, to the small scale, we are here now also using the Health Concentration Recovery, which is basically making us immune to the damage that is coming after a CC. We are breaking free of the C, we are immune, we can reposition ourselves, and we are adding additional evasion and movement speed on top. So extremely important to have that one in large scale, where sometimes you're getting attacked from so many people that without something like this, you will just simply not survive. To make our spin to wins even more impactful, we are here now also picking up the Gale, which if everything is working out properly, we can proc that twice in one spin attack. Quick Fire Nimble Leap stays the same, but since we are not having Cleaving Moonlight anymore, but we are still wanting want to apply the, uh, um, the Thundercloud, we have to stack the cooldown reduction here to actually keep it running properly. And I did claim that you can spin quite safe and the reason for that is actually the phantom smoke screen that you can pop before you're spinning, which will then make you immune to magic and ranged projectiles. And for the camouflage cloak, we are picking the CC immunity. It lasts for three seconds, which can also be used. So you're not able to be interrupted while you're casting your spin to win. So basically, you want to have something like this, like the smoke screen, and then you want to spin in the smoke screen for extra defense. Other than that, for that build, I would say you do not have like the kind of combo. It is extremely situated. So when you're in your backline, you want to cast those large AOE skills right here. Now when you see that someone is diving into your backline, maybe trying to get down one of your healers, then you're going to shadow strike on him and use ankle strike to prone him. When you're seeing that you have the opportunity that someone is low on health, maybe check out the targeting video for um, GVG. You can see it in your astral vision then when it's low on health, and then you're just going to click it and you're going to do the same combo with like the burst right here on the quick fire that you do on all the other builds as well. That was the quick or maybe not so quick update on the new skills but you're lucky on the gear not that much changed the only change from the last video is actually that i've exchanged the sapphire ring for an ember and the reason for that is the higher dexterity that you're getting that way which will make it a lot easier to reach the 70 dex breakpoint which is giving us critical hit and the valuable evasion again so once tier 2 is released or the runes depending on what comes first we will have an easier time getting to the 70 dex also when we are able to get a Tavern Dagger, for example, which is giving us um, Dex as a stat, we are having an easy time getting to the 70 Dex. Really easy when we have picked that ring. If you're interested in how to replace certain items, I'm always updating my current gear. So you can see, you can ask questions below the video in the comments or right here. I'm always answering everything. And since I did get my hands on a Queen Belendir, I also added a Arch Boss version right here. Once I am actually able to get the Tavern Dagger, we will also update that that version accordingly. Everything else in the guide stayed the same. When you go to the description, you will also find all the written ones, where to find all the gear, all of the base information about the class. When you're going to the skills to look for the skill updates, I also made sure that in the PvE version, you will find the priority order in which you should upgrade the skills so you're decked with that. If this guide helps you out or you're already maybe using it but did not find the time yet to five star it, it would help me out greatly to maintain our spot of the highest rated Expo Dagger guide on Best Lot. And as always, if you have any questions, just drop them in the comments. I will try to answer everything in less than 24 hours. Cheers, guys. Thank you.